Today, to spice things up a little bit, I tried something different. For the longest time, I've always been amazed by these Instagram concept artists that a lot of YouTubers plug in all of their videos, and I have before, such as art.designer underscore on Instagram. He's done work for me before, and we've collaborated on a few projects. But I never myself have really dove into what I would like to see in a future Apple product. And this time, I got brave, I took some time, and I designed my own concept for an iPad Pro 2, as I would like to see it. This is not based on rumors. However, it's not entirely impossible. So here it is, if you're wondering what it looks like. What it essentially is, is a bigger version of the iPhone Edition or 8, because I'm really loving the design leaks we're getting for that. And in the scheme of replicating a seamless Apple ecosystem, what I would like to see on a bigger iOS device is simply an iPhone that has better specs, a bigger display, but is still on par in every other category. So this concept is assuming that they figure out how to embed Touch ID under the display. We're still Still not sure if they figured that out, but if they have, I would love to see that translated over to the iPad because as several rumors earlier were suggesting, the home button was going away on the 10 and a half inch iPad in favor of a bezel free device. And I love the idea of having one single size bezel around the entire display on the iPhone 8. So I simply brought that to the iPad here. And because I want to see this great phone blown up onto a bigger device, I would carry over the dual camera if I was in charge. I know that's not likely, but I think it would be really incredible to see portrait photos make their way onto tablet because I know everyone hates tablet photography but I think there's some definite benefits like having a display that can show you the true resolution of whatever photo you're taking. On your iPhone the screen's rather small so you don't really get to absorb all of that beautiful detail that our portrait photos can take. So with the new dual camera setup I would love to see that moved onto an iPad so that you could enjoy those beautiful photos that Apple's dual camera is capable of taking on a 10 and a half inch or more sized display. It's a great Great camera and I love using it and I would love to see it brought over to my iPad as well. Now of course if you've noticed the bottom I would keep the same aspect ratio as the iPads have it right now 4x3 but I still think there's plenty of real state on the display right now to include a function bar similar to the iPhone 8 where you have your home button there and you also have some little widgets to the side that change depending on what's going on in your device. So in this particular concept I just imagined that music was playing so at the bottom you would have play pause and fast forward and rewind and also a little place where you could scrub through the song you were listening to. Now, maybe if music's not playing, it could show you Apple News top stories down there or any other customizable widget that you would have in your widgets page. Whatever the top most favorite widget you have is, that could be shown at the bottom. Maybe how much RAM your iPad is using. Maybe that function bar changes when someone starts to message you on messages or messenger. A little pop-up will show at the bottom that someone is typing. This is kind of a live right now happening on your device with the updated A11 chip or perhaps A11X chip on this device. Device. You could be exporting a video in iMovie and then leave iMovie and see the progress of your export at the bottom. Say you're airdropping videos or photos to a different device, but you don't want to just stay in the Photos app, so you leave the Photos app and the progress of that airdrop shows at the bottom of the screen. You're updating apps on the App Store, so at the bottom you can track progress of where your apps are in their download. There's plenty of potential for a function bar on a display of this size, and I would love to see how iOS takes advantage of all that. There are a couple things I want to do differently with this iPad that people might not like. I've thought a lot about this and it's because I want the iPad to be a more pro device because right now it's really great for casual stuff but it's not really great for professional use. There's some people who use it for audio but not a lot for video. There's a couple apps out there that I haven't tested yet that can do some pretty advanced editing but nothing too advanced but because I actually want it to be a MacBook killer or a laptops in general killer with the iPad Pro 2 I would love to see two ports. I know I'm usually not the guy advocating for more ports but I do have a bit more reasoning with this. One. First of all, if I had it my way, I would make the iPad switch to USB-C. Yes! All of your old lightning cables would be useless. I'm okay with that because I want this Pro device to be able to transfer files between actual hard drives and you can actually plug in SD cards when you have the right adapter. In other words, it will have the similar port set up as a MacBook Pro. USB-C on two sides. You wouldn't have one side with two ports. You would have USB-C on one side and USB-C on the other. That way, when you're holding your iPad in landscape and you need it to charge, the cable doesn't have to stretch across the entire length of the device if you want to hold it a particular way. So you can plug it in this side, or maybe if you prefer to hold your iPad the other way, you can plug it in that side. It provides options. I don't think it would make the device look that much more ugly. I just think that would be a functional use that would also be handy for professionals who want to plug in accessories, USB-C ones, or plug in hard drives that are greater than SD cards. Say people film with the RED cameras. Those don't take SD cards. They take massive, massive solid state drives.
drives. Of course, they have USB-C transfer cables. You could transfer those directly into your iPad. This would allow for third parties to take further advantage of the software in iOS to make it more professional so that you're not just limited to DSLR editing on the iPad right now. Lightning is good, but it's not quite good enough. It does not stand up to Thunderbolt 3 on USB-C. This, of course, could mean faster charging, as right now the iPad Pro takes quite a while to charge unless you buy a different wall adapter. The iPad Pro has a fairly big battery, so to me it would make sense to make this switch to USB-C, which on my MacBook, it charges incredibly fast, even though it uses a ton of power. If you haven't noticed, the back of this iPad Pro 2 is also glass. I would love to see wireless charging brought to an iPad. As we're fairly confident we're going to be seeing that on the next iPhone, wouldn't it make sense to bring it over to the tablet as well? Maybe if we have it on both, including our Apple Watch, we'll be able to support one giant Apple plate that is big enough to fit all of our devices so that with one giant device, one accessory, you could drop down your Apple Watch, you could drop down your iPhone and your iPad onto a little pad this big and it would charge all of them at the same time, no ports necessary. That's what this iPad Pro 2 would allow. The regular standalone wireless charging pad could just be a little circle that you just place on your nightstand and then you can just drop your tablet on it, providing more options for charging. It's pretty hard to see, but I just like to infer that the eyesight camera would be embedded into the top bezel, which these all around bezels are going to be slightly thicker than the iPhones because it is a bigger device, meaning you would have a bit more room to hide your eyesight camera at the top bezel. Or if they figure out a way to hide it behind the OLED panel, which some rumors are saying that they have, been able to put the IR sensor and the eyesight camera behind the OLED display, those cameras could be invisible, which is really cool and I would love to see that brought to the tablet as well. Which means, yes, I want the iPad to also make the switch to OLED just like the iPhone has. The colors are better, it can save battery life when dark mode is enabled, and also you could see something else, an always on display. This means if the battery is good enough, you can always have the time, the date, and that little home button on the screen available, even when you're not using the iPad. It could just sit there and always have that selected amount of pixels on as long as they don't burn in the screen. That way you know where the button is and you know where to put your fingerprint to unlock it. Before you get too crazy, hey, yes, I would remove the headphone jack because screw you. Also, this iPad is going to be smaller than the 12.9 inch, so we're going to need that extra space to fill with batteries and hardware components. There was also a patent passed a while ago where Apple had the idea of displaying notifications on your smart cover. Smart covers are very popular. I think they're the best Apple accessory because they don't completely wrap around the entire device. They just kind of cover the front glass of it and that's all, it's very light. But Apple had this idea that your smart cover could connect to the smart connector on the side of the iPad. That way the smart cover receives power and data and notifications as well as the time could be displayed on one of those middle columns of the smart cover. That way when your iPad is covered and sitting on a table, you can see notifications when they show up and then open up the smart cover obviously to interact with those notifications. I love that idea. I'd love to see them do that even though the smart cover would likely be $150 or more. That would be clever and I'd love to see it. Since this is going to be a USB-C supporting iPad, I do want an Apple Pencil 2 with an improved battery life and USB-C connector instead of a lightning one. This could also mean it's capable with pairing to our MacBook Pros so that artists who want to draw on their Mac instead of their iPad could still use the certified Apple stylus. Of course, they could use that MacBook concept I talked about a couple weeks ago. This Apple Pencil could also support the W1 chip for easier pairing, or even better, Bluetooth 5.0, which I also would love to see included on the iPad Pro 2. There's no arguing why you should put Bluetooth 5.0 on anything. It's faster, the range is better, just put that on any new piece of tech, yes. We'd of course still have our four stereo speakers on the edges, and that way you don't have to have that earpiece into the display, like you see on many iPhone 8 concepts, which would result in a beautiful curved corners display that is large, with finally a rounded body, unlike the flat edge body we have on the iPads right now with the giant bezels. And I understand a lot of the complaints out there right now, you probably already commented this. There's no room for your hands, right? Because when you're holding it, your thumbs need to rest on something. Listen, Apple is nailing down on palm rejection. They understand the difference between a pointer and a holder of the device, so I don't think that would mess up your display very much because Apple understands the difference between palms and pointers. So yes, your hands would be on the display a little bit, but that would not mess with anything because the Apple iPad would understand that is a palm and that's not supposed to be interacting with the device. So you can just hold it and the device understands when you want to interact and when you don't. They do this on the MacBook trackpad all the time. People were always worried that you would accidentally set it off all the time and that never happens to me. It's never happened once. So I understand that Apple is good at palm rejection. That's why I'm okay with these very thin bezels on this next generation iPad. But of course, at the end of the day, design is just cool. It's not really that important. The biggest difference with this iPad is I'd love to see more push for pro software. I want Apple to bring Final Cut Pro to the iOS device. It can be super expensive.
expensive. That's okay for software as long as it's professional and we can see an Apple Pencil supported, optimized, customizable workstation that is on the iPad. Because right now iMovie barely makes the cut and that's still like one of the best editing apps we have on iOS. Apple makes some apps that aren't available on the iPhone. Just because it's on the App Store, it doesn't mean it has to be supported on a five and a half inch screen. Just make it for the iPad. It only works on that because it requires that extra specs and it requires that extra screen space. That way this iPad, while it may be expensive, I would price this iPad Pro 2 in the $1,500 range because it's so insane. Bringing so many new technologies, embedded touch ID, OLED display, wireless charging, glass back, curved corners, edge to edge display, except for that tiny bezel, potential hidden iSight camera and IR reader. And on top of all of this, redesigned processors that are faster and likely an expanded battery supporting two USB-C ports, that's a lot. So I would understand if this started at $1,500 with a standard 256 gigabytes of internal storage. Creators would be interested in that because it is the same price as a laptop, yes, but I do firmly believe that you can have a touch interface that supports professional apps. It hasn't been done yet because I think with the Windows 10 devices, you just plug in a keyboard and mouse, turn your tablet into a laptop to make it professional. To me, that doesn't count, but with this, it would be touch interface only inside and out have the optimization, the pro software, and pro hardware to make a device that is truly revolutionary. And hey, you can throw in the fact that it's waterproof at the end if you want. I don't know why not. Just, sure, waterproof iPad, why not? What are your thoughts on the iPad Pro 2? What features did I not list that you would like to see? Let me know all of them in the comments below. And would you like to see me design more concepts of myself? I know this one isn't perfect. I've never done this before. This was completely experimental, but I'd love to hear all your feedback, good and bad. Thanks for listening on my first try. Hopefully I will get better and our dot designer said he might be working on different angles and more perfected viewpoints of this iPad Pro concept. So definitely follow me on Instagram and Twitter if you expect to see those updated concept images. They're interesting and he's really good at what he does. This is your Apple Sheep here and I will see you in the next one.